Welcome young people to your message today and um, I hope that you are okay and that your week is, has gone well. Now we are in Acts 24, we are not far off finishing and I just want to um, share this brief message with you and I hope that you listen to this before we meet again on Tuesday um, because we'll have a little recap and quiz on it. So we have moved into Acts 24 and what you'll see here is that Paul is facing some trials in a place called Caesarea and all the action takes place here in Caesarea and I want to introduce you first of all to the main players in this chapter. So here they are, good looking bunch that they might be. Um, these people are all religious, so they're the high priest, there are elders in there, and there's even a lawyer in there for good measure. And these religious people are against Paul. They do not like Paul and what he stands for. And I find it interesting that religious people are often the most judgmental people. They are very quick to point the finger when they themselves are the most guilty. And this is exactly what these religious people do. They accuse Paul of a number of things. Here's the first thing they accuse him of. They accuse him of being a troublemaker. They say that Paul is, has been stirring up trouble wherever he goes. Then they accuse him of being a ringleader. They say he's a ringleader of a cult or sect of his day. And then they accuse him of being a desecrator. Uh, that is somebody who desecrates, vandalizes things. And they accused him of desecrating the temple. So they had these accusations against him. Now here's another character in this chapter 24, and that is the governor Felix. And he is the big cheese that has got to rule over and make a ruling about what the accusations are and whether Paul is guilty. And he watches over the whole of this trial. Now, Paul disagrees with every one of the charges that's brought against him. Uh, and he says, you know, they've got no proof of what they're saying. And then he says this, however, I admit that I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets. And so Paul cleverly moves the conversation round to what he wants to talk about, which is that he is a follower of the way. Now, this term is very interesting because it's used numbers of times in the book of Acts to describe the early church. They were followers of the way. And I wonder, young people, if you can guess the reason why they use this term, the way. Do we remember anything that Jesus said about this term, the way? Well, I'm sure you all know this scripture in John 14 and verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And so the early followers of Jesus <coughs> used this phrase, the way, to describe who they were. And I got to thinking about, so what does it mean to be a follower of the way? And how are we today followers of the way? So three things about this. The first one is that followers of the way were loyal to Jesus. You know, Paul was loyal to Jesus when he stood in court and at great cost to himself admitted that he followed the way. And, you know, today we may not be those who are dragged into court for our faith. So how else do we show our loyalty to Jesus? Loyalty is about actions. It's about the actions that we take. And so whatever we see Jesus doing, we also 
ought to show our loyalty by doing what he does. So if Jesus, we see Jesus reading the scriptures, then if we're going to show loyalty to him, we are also going to read the scriptures. If we see Jesus praying to the Father, then to show loyalty to Jesus is to pray to the Father. If we see Jesus hanging out with people who've got not many friends or no friends, then to show loyalty to Jesus, we also ought to include and welcome those who are on the outside edge. Secondly, followers of the way worship Jesus. Paul says this right at the beginning, and he says, you know, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers. What he's saying there is that he doesn't worship all the Roman gods. He worship, worships the one true living God, and that is Jesus Christ. And we today, as followers of the way, must worship Jesus. Now, if you stop and you think about what does it mean to worship someone, it's about how much devotion and time you give to that person. Some people today spend more time worshipping their phones than they do worshipping Jesus. And, you know, if we are not careful, we can worship our phone more than we worship Jesus because we give time and attention to that, but not Jesus. And then finally, followers of the way place their faith in Jesus. You know, Paul did not place his faith in Felix to set him free from the trial. Paul kept his faith firmly in Jesus. And in fact, he spent two years talking with Felix about his faith in Jesus. And we today are often in difficult situations, aren't we? We're right now again as we've been saying all through this study, we've been on our inner pandemic. And our faith shouldn't be placed in the world and the world's answers to this problem. Our faith should be firmly in Jesus, who will never disappoint, who will never let us down. So followers of the way are loyal to Jesus. They worship Jesus and they have faith in Jesus. And I want to encourage you to keep on following and being a follower of the way jesus so let's just pray and finish our time so jesus we thank you that you are the way the truth and the life and we uh, look forward to being those who are loyal to you who are faithful to you who worship only you we pray for this week that you would send us out to be like light and truth and hope in the situations that you put us in. We just commit our week to you and ask for your protection and your guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. So have a really good week, guys, and um, I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday.